to Rita's world. My name is Rita and in this channel I get to share with you videos about motherhood, lifestyle, travel and food. If you're new to this channel, welcome and don't forget to subscribe and if you're already part of Rita's world, keep it locked. So what's happening in Rita's world this week? This week I'll be away from my family for about four days and uh, I just wanted to make a video about my checklist for when I travel without my kids. This is uh, something that I've been doing for a very long time because sometimes I get to travel without my children and it can be very, 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 very uh, stressful if I don't go through this checklist. Every time I try without doing it, something comes up and then it, it throws me off balance and I get so much anxiety. And so over my decade of motherhood, I have come up with a checklist that I have to go through uh, every time I'm about to leave my kids for a long time. So without much further ado, let me go through the checklist. And maybe if you're mom and if you, if you always travel without your kids, this is something that maybe you can borrow or you can also share in the comment section below. Let me know what other things that you put on your checklist when you're traveling without your children. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. Uh, it is free. Just hit on that red bell down there the red button down there that says subscribe and uh, join the Ritter's world family so the first thing that i'm gonna check that is on my checklist is medication and the reason why medication for me is number one on the checklist is because every time i travel i tend to experience my kids uh, coming down with a flu or maybe a bug a stomach bug or something and it can be very very frustrating if you're not around your kids to be able to you know notice the differences and even know what exactly they are going through because my kids are still young they cannot communicate very well most of them or rather they cannot express themselves very well there's only one who is 10 years and the rest are under five years so the first thing is medication over the years i've learned um i've gotten used to certain um say mild diseases like flu or maybe a stomach bug that i've learned to take care of right here at home and I have a mini medicine cabinet call it where I put some medicine which are over the counter that can help us uh, alleviate the symptoms as we wait on to take to the child to the hospital so right here with me I have a box or rather a container this container I got it from house of leather don't worry about how the, med the medication looks like right now because I was trying to check and see if I have everything I need and uh, some of the things in here, as you can see, this is um, ORS. ORS is usually for uh, fluids. Like when, the, when a kid is having diarrhea, you use this to um, hydrate, to hydrate, I think. Yes, to hydrate. So this, I have a lot of them because, like, like I said, two of my kids are under, two, uh, under five years. And this has come a lot um, handy a lot of times when they have diarrhea. The one thing that I never, ever, ever, ever leave the house without is this. This is Brustan. This is a Brufen and par Paracetamol. This I use for fever and also it's good for inflammation. So I'm just going to mention like three or four uh, must have for me. It doesn't have to be the same as yours. You don't have to do it the same way I do it. You don't have to have a medicine cabinet if you don't uh, feel like it's necessary. But for me, over the years, I've come to realize that you actually need this uh, over-the-counter medication sometimes in the house for when there are emergencies okay so this is for fever and also speaking of fever every mother who has a child has to have this this is for checking fever it's a thermometer you can get this at a local um, pharmacy or drugstore I got this from a pharmacy you have to have this because sometimes the people you live in the house you ask them what is the fever like how is the baby looking how do they feel are they feeling hot they can't really quite tell you uh, exactly what the information you want so this for me uh, I think there's nothing worse than puking diarrhea and having fever for a child I think for me I think those are the worst experiences for me so for me this really gives me peace of mind because when they tell you the baby is hot, you can actually confirm if the baby is hot. There's something else that I never miss in my house, which is an antihistamine. 
this is usually when uh, maybe they're, they're coming up with a flu or they have an, a reaction uh, maybe sneezing uh, you know the, the weather in Nairobi is quite bipolar so sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold and now that the kids are going to school they pick a lot of flu from from school and also this COVID so this I used to alleviate the symptoms and this I have to have at all times in this house uh, what else do I have to have there's something else I had where they put it This is an anti-nausea uh, for when the kids are puking. So if someone calls me and I'm away and she tells me the baby has puked three times, I would say, first of all, give them this as you organize yourself to go to the hospital because I don't want the baby to, to puke and get dehydrated. That is the worst kind of um, illness. And then also this is uh, the, the, they're called suppositories. This is a paracetamol, but for inserting in the anal area because sometimes the fever can be very high and you need something to to bring it down instantly so this i don't i don't miss in my house especially when i'm away so if maybe for example they've checked the fever and it's too high i i, I suggest i recommend whoever is in the house whoever is in the house to use this as they prepare to take the kid to the hospital this is also a metino a metino also the, the a metino also is the same as this one um I think this is a generic uh, medication. This is, I think, the original. This is the Michino. It's also for nausea and vomiting. So for me, I think the, the, the three things that I try to make sure I can control even when I'm away is vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. So if I have those three, then I'm comfortable that even if the baby is puking, they're able to manage it as we organize to take the baby to the hospital. There's so many other medications in here. There's um, medicine for for the warming there's panadols there's so many things here but most of them are just like um, over-the-counter medications to just alleviate the symptoms as we organize ourselves to go to the hospital even this is when they have a reaction this is calamine like when they maybe they've eaten something and they're having a, an itchy skin or a reaction on their skin they you can apply this so i won't go through the whole thing that is just a brief of what i have and number one being a priority is medicine in the house the number two for me is uh food actually no uh, in, in line with the medication, there are also some things that I have to, or I must have, and those are medical cards. Like if you have an, uh, an insurance cover, you can leave them behind or you can keep them at places where the whoever is in the house, the nanny or whoever is able to reach them. So like now here, there's a, I don't know how I'm going to do this so that you don't see the details. There's NHS, NHIF and there's UAP. These are the cards. And um, I like to leave this behind just in case, especially for the, the kids. I can carry mine, but I, I leave the one for the kids just in case they get ill and they need the cards for registration. If, for example, if they've gone to the hospital and they need to register, uh, that can be done. Also in line with uh, medication and, and the cards, you need contacts. Your mother needs a support system, especially at a time when you're traveling with your spouse. So that means that you leave the kids in the hands of your nanny. And if you have maybe a friend or a sister or a neighbor that you trust and that uh, you're comfortable with coming to check up on your kids, for me, it's either my sisters or my brother or my friend Rosette. They're the ones who are around the neighborhood. So I'll always call them up and give them a heads up. I'm traveling and in case of anything, I may need your help. So you leave all these contacts with the people that you live in the house so that in case something happens, they're able to come and um, be there for your kids as you organize to come back home. The other thing is food. Like when you're traveling and you're leaving your family for a certain amount of time, uh, it is advisable that you shop in advance if you're not a bulk shopper like I am. But for me, I usually do shopping in bulk. So most of the time during the month, there's always food available because we, we budget uh, groceries for a whole month and also we budget bulk shopping for three months. So, but in the event that something is not there, then I must avail it before I travel. Or if I cannot do that, I have to leave some small money for whoever is in the house to be able to uh, facilitate for the kids to get what they need there's nothing as bad as when you're out there either on vacation or you're traveling or you're hustling and your kids are calling you from home and they're saying mom you're hungry you're hungry trust me you can never have fun wherever you are so food is another priority that I check off my list and when I say food I also I don't want to say money for buying whatever it is they need in my case there's always food but I always leave mad money 
mad money is like money you just leave just in case uh, something happens so you give your daddy some small money and also i like to hide cash somewhere in the house not a lot but i just find a spot where i put money in case it's a problem that is bigger than what i had left and in case they need that money urgently then i'll be able to advise to you know go and get the money from whatever it is so money and food those two hand in hand you have to leave some money someone may need transport or fare or an uber in case of an emergency so they'll be able to use that the last thing on my checklist is utilities for some reason every time i leave nairobi i they have to call me and tell me there is no gas there is no netflix mom mom we want to watch netflix there's no wi-fi mom the electricity i don't know what so if you're living during the, the maybe the time when you know your subscriptions are almost over it is advisable that you either renew or you put money aside for renewal especially if you're going to a place where there's no communication maybe there's no network or something like that so you make sure that your electricity is up to date you make sure that your wi-fi is up to date you make sure that the kids channels are up to date because you need to keep them engaged while you are away otherwise they're going to nag your nanny and disturb a lot so anything that you feel that is a subscription that you need to to pay for and it's almost that time you do it in advance so also that means that um for example the gas personally i usually have a small maker which is always full as a standby because gas usually ends in the weirdest times of the night like sometimes you're making dinner and whoosh, it's over or you're making breakfast of the kids and pop it's over and there's nothing really you can do those times you can't even get gas so having a small backup maker for me has worked for a very very long time so i would advise if you're a mom and you have the big maker uh, the big uh, cylinder you can get the smaller cylinder filled and just have it there on standby so that when the gas is over sometimes you don't even have that money immediately you can be using the small maker as you organize your finances it doesn't really mean that you have to travel sometimes uh, when the gas is over and maybe it's at night you cannot access the big gas so you use the small one as you wait to organize yourself the next morning so guys, this is the information I wanted to share with you. I hope it has been beneficial. I hope it has been helpful. I know I am not perfect. I know I am not Miss Know It All. So obviously there are things that are, are, are missing on this checklist. So if you're a mom and you also do a checklist, this is a very simple checklist because I'm just going to Mombasa and back and I'll be away for four days. But if I was going to leave the, it was gonna be a very, very, very detailed checklist. So four days, this is the, the, the this is the checklist that I use. It is minimum five items: medication, food, uh, subscription, gas. Uh, what else? Medication, food, subscription, Wi-Fi, medical cover, contacts. Those are the few things that I need for now because I won't be away for so long. So and anyway, Mombasa is like 45 minutes away. In case of anything, I can always get a flight back and come be with my kid. So if you're a mom and you have a checklist, kindly share in the in the comment section below. Let us learn from each other. What does your checklist look like? And do you always checklist when you leave your kids behind, or you're the kind of mom who just says, "Oh, tutonge ambele." You know, so let us know how do you survive? How do you manage to run your house when you're away? Comment in the comment section below. Let us learn from each other. Let us share. Parenting is not easy, it is a, a, a learning process. No one became a mom after being a professor, so we're all learning in this journey. So, that being said, guys, let me go catch my train. Um, I guess I'll see you in the next video.